Hi, this is Terrence Wu with Hawkridge Systems. In this video, I'm going to walk through the process of running a simulation using Simulia Structural Engineer on the 3D Experience platform. If this tool is new to you, this should be a good video to help you get started. Before we get into it, I want to mention that this will be a quick overview. While I'll cover the main steps for setting up an analysis, I won't be getting too deep into the details. So if you find yourself wanting more information, or feel a bit lost at certain points, don't worry too much. Stick around to the end of the video, or skip to the end, and I'll share where you can find training content to fill in the blanks. I have this suspension model. I'm going to be focusing on this steering bracket assembly, which consists of three parts. The steering bracket, pin, and ball. The first step is to save this model to the 3D Experience Cloud Platform. I'll go to the 3D Experience tab of the task pane, which lists the assembly in three parts in the active window, and I can click this button at the bottom to save them to the cloud. In this window, I can choose which collaborative space the files will be saved to, and add a bookmark if I want. I'll click Save and wait while the files are uploaded. Once they're uploaded, the status icons will change and display green check marks. Now, there's one more thing I need to check before I can create a simulation. I'll expand the task pane and scroll all the way to the right. The last column shows the convert status of the files. After the SOLIDWORKS files are uploaded, they need to be converted to 3D Experience format before they can be used in a simulation, which can take a few minutes. When the icons change to green, I can move on. I'll select the assembly file and then click the 3D Experience Compass at the top left. I'll scroll down my list of roles and find Structural Engineer, and then I'll scroll down the list of apps and find Linear Structural Scenario Creation. This will launch the app in a new window and create a new simulation. I can give the simulation a name, choose the type of analysis, and click OK. The main toolbar, called the Action Bar, is located at the bottom of the screen and is organized into various tabs. If this is your first time using the tool, the icons are likely displayed without any text like this. If you right-click on the toolbar, you can choose to display icons and text, which is a lot easier to navigate if you haven't memorized the icons. SOLIDWORKS users should also change the view manipulation settings immediately. At the top right of the screen, click on your initials and preferences. Under Common Preferences, Profile, you can choose the SOLIDWORKS profile. You'll need to close and relaunch the app for the setting change to take effect, and then you'll be able to rotate and zoom with your mouse wheel the same as you're used to in SOLIDWORKS. The assistant on the right side of the screen can be really helpful. It lists out the steps needed to define the simulation, and when I click on a step, the commonly needed commands are listed below. If you don't see the assistant, you can open it by going to the action bar, clicking the arrow next to Feature Manager, and selecting Assistant. Under Setup, the first thing I need to do is create a finite element model. I'll choose the automatic method which will automatically define a mesh for each of the parts, and click OK. Next, I can see that the assistant is telling me that the simulation has no steps. I'd like to perform a static analysis, so I'll scroll down and create a static perturbation step. Next, parts. I can see that I need to specify materials for the parts. I'll scroll down and click on Material Palette. I'll type in 6061 T6 to filter. Our material library is a bit messy, so there are a bunch of duplicates. I'll right click on this copy, choose apply, click on the bracket, and click the green check mark. Next, I'll search for alloy steel, and again, right click and apply for both the rod And ball. 
Under connections, there are options for mechanical components like bolts and springs. I should mention that the assistant only lists the more common commands, and additional options are available in the action bar. I don't actually need any connectors for this simulation, so I can move on to interactions. I'll start by connecting the pin to the bracket with a tie. I'll open the contact detection tool, select tie surfaces together, and find surface pairs. The tool detected four pairs, but number three is the only one I want to apply, so I'll remove the others and then click OK. Now I'll add general contact. This specifies sliding contact between all components other than the surfaces I just tied together. Next, boundary conditions. There's a selection of different boundary conditions I can apply. For this analysis, I'll define a hinge fixture at each hole. And I'll use a slider fixture on the back face to represent the rigid face of the knuckle this bracket is attached to. Under loads, I'll create a force. I'll apply 6,000 newtons to the ball in the negative Z direction and click OK. The mesh was automatically defined when I created the finite element model. If I open the Mesh Part Manager, I can see the mesh settings for each part. From here, I can adjust the mesh size if needed, and if I double-click, I can access even more options. I'm happy with the default settings for now, so I'll click Update to generate the mesh. I'm now ready to run the simulation. When I click Simulate, I get a window with a few options. I'm able to choose whether I want to run the simulation locally or on the cloud. For either local or cloud, solving on up to four cores is included. If you have large, complex simulations and want to solve on more than four cores, extra credits or tokens are required. I'll click OK and the simulation will start to run. This analysis is fairly simple, so it should only take a minute or so. Once the job is completed, I can close the status window and look at the results. Here, I have the Von Mises stress. I can use this drop-down menu to choose other plots, such as displacement. I can also access the plots in the tree at the left side of the screen. And I can create additional plots from the action box. There are many commands to help visualize results. For example, on the display tab of the action bar, I can turn on plot sectioning to see the stress distribution inside the parts. Now that I've completed my simulation, it's probably a good idea to save my work. At the top right of the screen, I'll click on the arrow icon and choose Save. Hopefully, this walkthrough has been helpful for you, but I do realize I didn't go into much detail. For more information, the best place to start is the 3D Learn training material. To access this, log into the 3D Experience platform in your browser, click on the compass at the top left, find the 3D Experience Works Learner role, and then the 3D Learn app. Select Catalog, and then the 3D Experience Works Library. Scroll down to find Learning Experience for Structural Engineer, and choose Perform as a Structural Engineer. These learning modules, titled Practice Simulia Structural Model Creation and Practice Simulia Linear Structural Scenario Creation, are a good place to start. Of course, there's a ton of training content here, and it's worth it to explore the other courses too. Hopefully, this overview video and the training content help you get started off on the right foot with Simulia Structural Engineer. If you have any questions or need some help, please reach out to us. Thanks for watching.